Caernarfon is a royal town community and port in Gwynedd, Wales. With a population of 9,615, It's pretty much like um, every other castle I've ever been to. However, when Edward I became King of England in 1272, relations with Graffet broke down, resulting in the First War of Welsh Independence in 1276. The Anglo-Norman war machine crushed the Welsh and Edward took control of all the land to the east of the River Conway. Gruffeth was allowed to retain his title of Prince of Wales, but in effect, his domain had been reduced to little more than Gwynedd. I'm still hiding from uh, Snowdonia. This one The Battle of Eversham on the 4th of August 1265 was one of the two main battles of the 13th century England's Second Baron's War. It marked the defeat of Simon de Montfort, Earl of Leicester, and the rebellious barons of the future king, Edward I, who led the forces of his father, King Henry III. It took place on the 4th of August 1265, near the town of Eversham in Gloucestershire. Go this way. <laughs> Peace did not last long though, and the Second War of Welsh Independence started in 1282. This time, Edward I resolved to conquer Wales in its entirety and launched a three pronged attack from Carmarthen, Chester, and Montgomery, plus a maritime assault on Anglesey. Wales was overrun, Gruffeth was killed at the Battle of Orwin Bridge in 1282 and Welsh strongholds were systematically besieged and captured. Canernafon Castle was built around the existing earthworks of the earlier fortifications under the direction of the King's Chief Engineer, Master James of St George. The castle was a long but narrow enclosure that was divided into upper and lower wards. Two major gateways, the King's Gate and Queen's Gate, provided access into the upper ward. Seven large polygonal towers dominated the structure and provided the residential accommodation. Two smaller turrets flanked the Queen's Gate. The town walls were built concurrently at the same time and enclosed an irregular area extending 250 metres north of the castle. Work started on Canernafon Castle and the town walls in 1283, concurrently with the fortifications of Conway and Harlech. However, Canernafon was by far the most elaborate and expensive of all three. Edward I ultimately spent in excess of 27,000 on the site. In 1284, Edward of Canernafon is born to the castle, son of Edward I. In 1294, Maddock put himself at the head of a national revolt in response to the actions of new royal administrators in North and West Wales and the imposition of taxes such as that levied on the 115th of all Liverpools. As a royal prince descended directly from Alvin Gwyneth and the fifth cousin of the last prince of Aberfruel, the executed brother of Lewin, Maddock declared himself to be the lawful successor and assumed the royal titles of his predecessors, including that of Prince of Wales. The uprising had been planned for months, and the attacks occurred on the same day in Port Wales. While Maddox acted in the north, and the attacks in the mid and south were led by a whole bunch of people's names that I can't pronounce.
In Edward's absence, a proclamation in his name declared that he had succeeded by hereditary right, and the barons swore allegiance to him. Edward finally arrived in London in August 1274, and he was crowned at Westminster Abbey, aged 35. He was a veteran warrior, the best lance in all the world, according to the contemporaries, a leader with energy and vision, and with a formidable temper. Canernafan Castle was attacked in 1403 and 1404 during the rebellion of Olwyn Gandwyr. Unlike many other fortifications across Wales, Canernafan resisted the attacks and provided a secure base from which government forces could operate against the rebels, although it took almost 10 years to suppress the uprising. The city has flourished, leading to its status as a major tourist centre and a seat of Gwinnett Council, with a thriving harbour and marina. Canerlefin was expanded beyond its medieval walls and experienced heavy suburbanation. Its population includes the largest percentage of Welsh-speaking citizens anywhere in Wales. The status of Royal Borough was granted by Queen Elizabeth II in 1963 and amended by the Royal Town in 1974. The castle and town walls are part of a World Heritage Site described as the castles and town walls of King Edward in Kenneth. <laughs> Canernafan Castle was constructed from coarse limestone but coloured banding was built into the walls in imitation of the great Roman walls of Constantinople or Istanbul. This was intended to demonstrate a link with the dream of Mashen Wildig, a story recorded in the Mabinagion about a Roman emperor who married the daughter of a Canernafan chieftain.
some great views from the castle. Some incredible views if you're not afraid of heights and are willing and able to climb some steep winding stairs. Overall, a very interesting castle and a worthwhile visit. The new features include the Games of Crowns exhibition, a life-size chessboard explaining the origins of Welsh princes, the life of Eleanor and Castile display details in eight phrases of the life of Edward I's wives through the Victorian-style carousel. Carnarvon Castle is arguably the greatest of Edward I's Welsh castles that served as a royal palace and administrative centre for North Wales. The masonry remains are largely as completed in 1330, although portions have been restored in later years. The town wall circuit is also largely complete. Postbox challenge. Gotta find a postbox somewhere. Where can we find a postbox? Complete. <laughs> Well, we hope that you enjoyed the brief but yet historical overview of Carnarvon Castle, which is in North Wales. And I would encourage anybody to go and visit it. It's really interesting. There are not many castles other than maybe Leeds Castle, which is in such good condition. Um, really, really interesting day out. I'm dedicating this to Karen Richards, who wasn't able to be there on the day that we filmed. So, um, hope you enjoy. And also, Mum and Dad, if you're watching, thanks. Bye.